You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. Tu es l'image de Dieu. I hold you in my heart. Tu es l'image de l'amour. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God To say la luce di Dio I hold you in my heart To say il volto dell'amore You are a part of me You are the face of God You are the face you are You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God 
You are the face of God. Tu es l'image de Dieu. I hold you in my heart. Tu es l'image de l'amour. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. Tu sei la luce di Dio. I hold you in my heart. Tu sei il volto dell'amore. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face you are the face of love. I hold you in my heart. You in my heart. You are my
Good morning, and welcome to Spiritual Life Center, a church that love is building. can feel God's mighty power and God's grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Let us pray. Dear God, we ask that you help us to discover ways to live from our higher self. Your master teacher, Jesus, taught that we are to be as a little child. Open our hearts and minds so that we might recapture the willingness of an infant to reach out to life to be spontaneous and innocent in all of our relationships, to allow our real self to express the love and the joy that fills our very being. We seek your will and your way, dear God, knowing that therein lies our good and the blessings of all persons. We do pray in the name and through the power and in the nature of the Christ spirit that lives within each one of us. And so it is. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, think I've lost my way, still you're there right beside me. And nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I will not forget your love for me and yet my heart forever is wandering. And Jesus be my guide and hold me to your side and I will love you to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path and a light unto my path. You're the light unto my path. Mother, Father, God, I come here this morning aware of your presence and power in my life. Each morning, as I rise up and give thanks for your many blessings, my understanding of life and my role in it increases, and I become more secure for I know who I am. I am a richly endowed child of God. I am secure in all that I have, for I know my treasure is in my mind and not in the things that I possess. I live my life from day to day as if God's supportive substance were as exhaustless and dependable as the air I breathe. I let go of all that separates me from God, from my good. 
I released any thoughts, feelings, or attitudes that are not for my highest and best. Paul said, I will pray with the spirit, and I will also pray with the mind. Jesus said, whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone. Oh God, how many times does this message need to be brought to me? that we can only have what we first give to others. The greatest gift is forgiveness, forgiving them for what they have done or what we thought they have done. Forgiving others so that I may be released from the indebtedness I have imposed upon myself. Jesus said, if your prayers aren't being answered, if you have a great need, if you desire to have a miracle in your life, before you pray, go to them and forgive them. And right now, in my mind, I go to them in your presence of God and say with my mind and my heart, I forgive you and I set you free. And as I do, I also forgive myself and set myself free. Prayer is breaking free of the past, breaking free of old thoughts, of feelings that things must stay the way they are in my life. Prayer is the rising up in consciousness to a new way of thinking, of hope and promise and joy. I feel the feelings of ecstasy, of joy, of God stirring, coming alive in me now. And I feel this beautiful feeling of God alive in me in the silence, in the silence. As I, as I bring my awareness back to this room, I am more aware than ever that God cannot do for me what God cannot do through me. I hold on to this feeling of peace, of quiet expectation, that God is in my heart and in my life, and that with and through the power of God, all things are possible for me. And for this, I say thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. And now let us join together as we sing and pray the Lord's Prayer.
God who began a good work in you. God who began a good work in you. The struggle you're facing is slowly replacing your hope with despair. Or the process is long and you're losing your song in the night. You can be sure that the Lord has his hand on you, safe and secure. God will never abandon you. You are his treasure, and God finds his pleasure in you. God, who began a good work in you. God, who began a good work in you. Nancy, thank you so much for your beautiful singing this morning. Everyone who sincerely desires a spiritual path sooner or later comes to a point where they make a quantum leap, a quantum leap in consciousness. And this comes about when they hear something feel something or experience something that takes them to a new place in understanding and awareness. That new place is a shift whereby they move from seeing God solely as a great resource that empowers them, guides them, inspires, and provides for them to a new perception that God lives in and through them. And from this point, it is a short step for them to see that they can then live from God. It's possible to know whether you have made this transformation. Some persons tend to believe they are allowing God to live through them when that may not be so. There is a way that you can know because during the next three Sundays, you will have Bible-based information that allows you to decide if you are living from God or what it will take for you to do so. Because sometimes we can get it wrong. A doctor friend told me about past patients who were miscommunicating their diagnosis. One man was telling his friends that he had romantic fever, when actually it was rheumatic fever. And another told his family that he was dealing with a smiling, mighty Jesus. It turned out to be spinal meningitis. When Michelangelo 
was asked how he could create such beautiful figures out of blocks of marble. He said that he merely chipped away the extraneous matter. The entrance hall of Galleria dell'Accademia in Florence, Italy, is lined with his unfinished statues from massive, raw pieces of marble. The master, many centuries ago, had begun to chip away the extraneous stone so that the figure would emerge. These rough figures bear unfinished chisel marks of a head, arms, torso, a hint of the grandeur but the rest of each figure is still captive in the lifeless rock. It's as though the perfection of the finished pieces is struggling to free themselves from their massive marble prisons. How easy it is to see a parable, a parallel in our own lives. Isn't one's true self often hidden within a hard exterior? Don't we often keep our splendor imprisoned where few can experience its grandeur and majesty? Like Michelangelo, we need to chip away any negativity so that the inner Christ self is alive and apparent to the world. Now this means that we must be willing to change. Rather, we must be willing to be changed. And this requires that we begin where Jesus began, at the very beginning of his three-year ministry, as quoted in Mark 1.14. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, practicing the gospel of God, preaching the gospel of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand, Repent and believe in the gospel. Now, there are two key words in this phrase of scripture. First is gospel, which means the good news. And what Jesus was saying when it says preaching the good news, preaching the good news of the kingdom of God in you. And the second key word is repent. When you repent, you take on a whole new way of thinking, a whole new way of believing. You have a whole new consciousness, a new attitude. For example, if you believe that outer circumstances and conditions have power over your life and well-being, power to prosper and advance you, and power to destroy what you build up and ruin you, then that belief must be changed. That is repentance. Repentance means more than merely changing your belief. It means changing your way of believing. Any such change would be evidenced in three areas that Jesus keyed in on in terms of the behaviors we demonstrate. We must always be willing to eliminate that in our life, which is no longer useful. The Buddha told of a man who used a raft to cross a river. He wrote, 
a man walking along a high road sees a great river. Its near bank is dangerous and frightening. Its far bank is safe. He collects sticks and foliage, makes a raft and paddles across the river, reaching the other side. Now suppose that after reaching the other shore, he takes the raft, places it on his head, wherever he goes. Would he be using the raft in an appropriate way? No. A reasonable person will realize that the raft has been useful to him, but that once he's arrived on the other side, it is proper to leave the raft behind and walk on without it. This is using the raft appropriately. In the same way, all truths should be used to cross over. They should not be held on to once you've arrived. You can always reclaim them if needed. You should let go of even the most profound insight on the most wholesome teaching. All the more so, it is important to let go of unwholesome teachings. Another example, a little boy was about to lose a baby tooth. He did not want to lose this tooth. He cried and made a big fuss about losing it. He could not understand that the baby tooth had to go to make room for a new and better tooth. Elimination of something in your life is always an indication that something better is on the way. Ralph Waldo Emerson said in his great essay, The Law of Compensation, that something must be taken from us in order to gain. Something must be eliminated to get a desired good into our lives. We said there are three areas Jesus keyed in on in terms of behaviors we must change. Let's zero in on that. The first of these three behaviors is revealed in the following true story. Art Linkletter, the radio and television host of past years, was born into great poverty. Until he was the age of 10, he did not know that holiday meals could come other than through charity. In his youth, he tried to work as he could. He even picked fruit and delivered it door to door. Finally, as a young man, he got his big chance in show business. He was told this was his real opportunity, making a presentation before the community chest. But when he got there, he saw that there were 14 persons in the audience and there were hundreds and hundreds of empty seats. Immediately, he became very discouraged, gave a listless performance and walked off stage, thinking this was the end of any opportunity at show business. Well, immediately following him, Jack Benny came on, gave it his all, gave it 100%, spoke for more than 30 minutes, had people laughing. And he told Linkletter, anytime there is one person in the audience, you give it all you've got. That's the only way to live. And Art Linkletter, in his remaining years, never forgot that lesson. And this points up a way of thinking that will pull you down. It will hold you back from your good. And it is revealed in every area of life 
by the following kinds of questions. Now ask yourself if you have not thought or spoken these questions yourself at some point in your life. Am I getting what I want out of this relationship? Is he or she doing as much as I am to make this relationship work? Am I getting enough out of this job? Will I gain sufficiently from this experience to justify the time and effort I might have to put into it? Now this kind of thinking works in the area of accounting or economics. It is the basis for supply and demand for bookkeeping where assets must equal liabilities but it is not the law in how to succeed in living. Jesus spoke often to the importance of our not just doing enough to get by, only what's expected of you. Rather, he emphasized the need for you to go beyond, to learn to become willing to do more than you have to do and to give more than you have to give. Jesus refuted the old belief that is your duty only to deal in even exchange thinking. From Matthew chapter five, verse 38, Jesus is quoted, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say to you, do not resist one who is evil. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your coat, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to him who begs from you and do not refuse him who would borrow from you. Jesus is not saying that you are to be a pincushion, rather to live in a way that you're going beyond what is just required of you. As Gandhi said, an eye for an eye, makes the whole world blind. Get yourself away from even exchange thinking. Anytime you find yourself doing more than you had to do, say to yourself, I dedicate this extra effort to the law of my highest good. Now, while we were in seminary near Kansas City, we became aware of a remarkable young man by the name of Chris, whose father had passed on. His dad had a physical disability and drove a car with special hand control features that allowed him to drive without using his feet. Now, Chris's father passed on. And a few months following that, his mother asked Chris to drive this car to take it to the police auction where it could be sold, donated and then sold by the police. Now, Chris, for his part, was 16 years old, had been working at jobs, saving money in order to himself buy a car, and within a year or two, wanted himself to go on to college. So he had saved $2,000 and he thought he'd take this $2,000 along to the police auction. And after he dropped off the family car, he would seek an older car that he could purchase for himself. Well, he got to the police auction and when he pulled in, soon he was walking off and encountered a woman in a wheelchair who said to him, doesn't that car have hand controls 
that allow you to drive? And he said, yes, it does. She said, oh, I want so much to have that car. I must have that in order to live my life adequately. I have $1,000, and I hope I can get it for that. Well, Chris was observing what was going on. He went around and was looking at cars that he could buy with his $2,000. And soon the auction started and his family car was one of the first ones that was up for auction. And the bidding began and it went past $1,000. And he looked over at the woman in the wheelchair and she was forlorn. She wasn't going to get her car. When it got to $1,500, Chris started to bid. He bid $2,000, $2,500. Finally, at $3,000, Chris was declared the winner of his own family car. He took the $1,000 of the woman's money and $2,000 of his own money and bought back the family car took the keys and gave it to the woman. He went home that day without the car that he had hoped to purchase for himself. He was not going to say anything to anyone about it. But the woman found a newspaper man there who was covering the event and told this person what had happened. Before long, it was in the Kansas City Star newspaper on the front page. And it even became national news in the evening report. Before long, Chris had received $30,000, allowing him to not only purchase his own car, but to satisfy a good portion of his upcoming college education. The universe will find ways to bless those who are not limited by even exchange thinking, but are willing to reach beyond and be of help to others. This practice of leaving behind even exchange thinking is the first evidence in knowing if you are allowing yourself to live from God. The second practice is equally profound and will be the focus of our message next Sunday. For now, we draw your attention to a young man by the name of Matt, who wanted to bring people together throughout the world. And he decided that joining them in dancing would be a great way to do so. Amazingly enough, over a period of more than a decade, he traveled to dozens of countries, including even North Korea, where a woman danced with him at great risk to herself personally. And he brought together in doing this thousands of persons, including even a segment you'll notice in the Detroit Riverside. I think you'll enjoy this.
thank you, Matt Harden, for this wonderful demonstration of how to bring people together and bring life in the course of doing that. Well, we are so delighted that you have joined us this morning and we hope it has helped you on your path, your spiritual path to gain insight and understanding. And we hope you're gonna be able to join us for the remainder of this series. For now, we invite you to bless this service and your spirit by joining in our prayer of sharing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And we would invite you to bless our church with your financial support. And there are three ways that you might do so. The first is through online giving through our secure website, www.slctroy.com forward slash give. The second is to mail a check or money order to Spiritual Life Center, 41340 Fox Run Road, number 106, Novi, Michigan, 48377. Or you might Call me with credit card information or a one-time charge. My cell is 248-925-6214. We also would like to welcome anyone joining us for one of your first times and invite you to join our email list by visiting our website, www.slctroy.com and clicking up in the upper right hand corner, join email list. And then by merely inserting your email address, we will be able to keep you informed of events happening here at Spiritual Life Center and also to send you the link for each weekly service. If you have any prayer requests, you can send that to us at Ronald F. Scott at gmail.com or call my cell 248 925 6214. We will send these prayer requests on to our prayer team as well as to Silent Unity where they are prayed over for 30 days. Amazing outcomes are being experienced daily as a result of this. You may also call Silent Unity at any time, 24 seven, on their prayer line and speak directly with a prayer chaplain. Their number is 1-800-NOW-PRAY. And we invite you to the Wednesday class that I will be giving this coming Wednesday, August 18th, and it will be Lessons in Truth, Part 3, completing the series. You can watch the prior Parts 1 and 2 on YouTube that were recorded during June and July. And we invite you to tune in the next two Sundays for the completion of the message, Living from God. Finally, we would invite you to now join our Zoom coffee hour at 11 o'clock or immediately following the service. You should have received a, an email link for this, and if not, contact us and we'll let you know how to do that. And now, let's join together in our peace song and benediction. God bless. Let there be peace on earth.
peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my joyous vow to take each moment. Now as you go forth, know that the light of God surrounds you, the love of God enfolds you. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The power of God protects you. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The presence of God watches over you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and grant thee peace. Wherever you are, God is. Amen. Amen. Go your way rejoicing. All is truly well.